I was trying to sell them what they needed as opposed to what they wanted. They weren't aware that they had that problem. And I think that's some a takeaway for your listeners is to really think about what problems are they aware of? Because you have to meet your prospects where they are. And if they don't yeah. even know they have the problem, it wastes so much time, energy, money trying to convince them that they have that problem. Speak to the problems they already know that they have. They may have told you to go to the big city, chase the busy crowds, find the bright lights, but no, you chose your own path to stay right here. I'm your host, Claire Bouvier. Welcome to the Small Town Entrepreneur Podcast, where opportunity is just on the other side of the door. This is such a fun episode because Caitlin Batcher is with us on the show. I have been following her since 2016 and have taken her Instagram courses way back in the day. She is an expert in transforming the online course creators into thriving and successful and wealthy entrepreneurs. Caitlin shares her journey from social media management all the way to groundbreaking course on maximizing Facebook groups for business growth. Discover the pivot that led her to unlock the secret to selling courses on autopilot, allowing a lifestyle of freedom without the constant hustle of launches. Not to mention that she has a revenue of $10 million selling her course of the autopilot launching called Scale with Success. Today, we're going to look at how Caitlin brings a new perspective, way to achieve success through the, through the blueprint she's going to share with us. So let's dive into some of the strategies and how she went from starting out creating courses and launching them. So this is a must listen episode if anyone is trying to make an impact and an income through online courses. All right. Welcome to the show, Caitlin. It is so awesome to have you here. And I didn't want to tell you this, but I have something kind of funny to tell you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, a good to hear. I'm really excited about this episode because it really resonates with the work I'm specifically doing on the trajectory I'm on. But I also know a lot of the solopreneurs that are tuning in. This is something that's going to be really, really powerful for them. But it's funny because... Your name popped up, but I was like, I kept racking my brain. I was like, okay, this is a topic that I'm super interested in. But I was like, wait a second. I took your Instagram seminar in 2016. That's right. It was called Wham Bam Instagram. The <laughs> Isn't that That's so, so crazy? Yeah. And then I was like, oh my goodness. I end up doing a small Instagram tutorial with a group of creatives. And I used your Instagram feed as an inspiration because remember all the bright colors yes. and it popped. And here we are. Your background literally speaks to that. So come full circle. Now you're specializing in scaling online courses. Yes. What were the key turning points for you to actually lock into this niche? Yeah. So I'm so glad you asked that because everyone always says, well, what do you sell? Just another course about making courses or whatever, right? That's a running joke. But I started creating courses about social media because I was freelancing as a social media manager. So I was doing the tweeting and scheduling for other businesses. Yeah. And I quickly felt like it got to be a bit tedious. And I thought it would be really fun to actually teach people how to do it themselves. I didn't really know about online courses at the time. So I was like, well, I'm just going to start doing some one-on-one -on -one consultations. And I found myself telling people the exact same thing over and over, which so many of your listeners probably find themselves in the same place. And yes. so after doing that, I was like, okay, I really need to package this into something that I can sell to leverage my time because I was fully booked out doing these one-on-one -on -one con consults and I couldn't do anymore. So I packaged this into a course. So the first course I created ever was called Bossy Biz Ladies. <laughs> big name, the, everything boss, babe, bossy, boss, girl, boss, mom, boss, whatever. <laughs> so I was in it. Okay. So I had this course, Bossy Biz Ladies. Everything was bright pink inside of it. I loved it. It was great. I love it. I love um, it. 
And so after a while of selling that in the course, I covered a number of different things, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, but Instagram seemed to be the one that people were most interested in. Okay. I'm learning just like so many of your listeners are learning now. And so I I think I need to be more specific. So I'm going to create an Instagram course. So then it was wham, bam, Instagram, which you took, right? (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Yeah. And so I did that for a while. One of the things that I was noticing is, yes, I was selling, I was using Instagram to sell my course, but I was also growing a free Facebook group and I was getting a lot of traction there. And so what my, uh, my Facebook group, you are ahead of your time, by the way, yes, which we'll come into later in the episode, but yes, genius move listeners. <laughs> yes. So I was growing private free Facebook group and that was going well. And I started getting a bunch of questions, like people saying like, Oh, how do you grow a Facebook group? How do you do this? So then I was like, okay, well, let's create a course. So then I created a course about how to, you know, start and grow a profitable Facebook group. And it's funny because that was the, that was the first course that I was able to sell that, that made a million dollars in one year. But it's so funny because the very first time that I opened up enrollment, it was like a big flop. My messaging was wrong. It was just like, I was, I had such, I was like, when I launch this course, it's going to make six figures and you know, all this stuff. And then it was like, wah, wah. like, I didn't even have that money been like there, that. been there, been there. So yep. it was basically like, I just kind of had to, when that happened, I basically had to kind of like make a decision. Well, am I just going to feel sorry for myself or am I going to do something about it? And I did let myself feel sorry for myself for one day. <laughs> and then hey, so that's, and yeah. this is like perfect segue because this is exactly what I want to know what happened. Yeah. And so, and so after I did, so after I, um, so after, so I felt sorry for myself for one day. And then what I did is I just started getting on the phone with everyone who didn't buy, not to sell them on the course, but to ask them questions about why they didn't buy. Like, what yeah. did I say wow. something specifically? Like, what was it about? Like, I mean, I probably did 20, 50 phone calls with people. And good for everyone, you. Yeah. And, and by doing that, I was able to like really quickly start to see patterns of, oh, well, people think, People think my course doesn't cover this, but it does. So that means I need to like better describe that or my, or a lot of people think, you know, this won't work for them because of X, Y, or Z, but a ton of my clients are X, Y, right. or Z. So, so it was just helping me figure out what I needed to clarify. And so that, so that then the following year, that was uh, 2017, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I was on the launch roller coaster. I didn't, <laughs> like, I just didn't know that it was even, I was so new. Like, I didn't know it was possible to sell on autopilot. Like, I, all, all the stuff that I was learning was about launching. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to launch it. So I launched it and it did well. But my quality of life was just like the pit. And my husband was like, if you launch again, you need to, <laughs> you need to stay in a hotel during that launch because this is a lot. And it's true. Like, and your story resonates. You know, you mentioned yeah. publicly. That's why I'm not saying I'm yeah, sharing yeah. that, you know, you in one of the launches, you talk about missing to pick up your daughter and yes. all these things during this. Then what were you noticing? Like you talk about evergreen, which I, I want to bring up because yeah. a lot of people are I mean, what does that actually mean? Yeah. But what was the biggest issue, though, when you talk to the customers? A lot of people don't go to that last part and ask why why did this not work so if you're comfortable can you share like what where was the gap what happened I had been focusing on talking about how the group was going to grow and how you were going to be able to generate money from it however people really wanted was engagement and in their mind engagement equaled money I was trying to sell them what they needed as opposed to what they wanted so it's like so Instead of trying to convince them, hey, you don't need to worry about engagement. You need to worry about generating money from your group. Like, here's how to do it. Yeah. So instead of that messaging. They I just weren't like, ready for that. They weren't aware that they had that problem. A takeaway for your listeners is to really think about what problems are they aware of? Because oh, especially that kind of top of funnel content, whether it's social media or through the funnel on a webinar or whatever, 
you have to meet your prospects where they are. And if they don't yeah. even know they have the problem, it wastes so much time, energy, money trying to convince them that they have that problem. Speak to the problems they already know they have. That's interesting. It, it is true because you were selling them to, uh, the next step to make the money because that's where you want to see them. Prof but really, I see that a lot with my own clients. They just want to get into the space to start to get comfortable and build that confidence. So that's almost like we get ahead of ourselves as creators. What is interesting, and it's funny because everyone's like, the trend of 2024, jump on this new, this is what you got to do. Online courses are not new, but the customer journey is always changing. How we create accessibility in the course or motivate them. The whole community aspect is a huge component to building the course. I have taken way too many courses and I actually have to dive in and just launch my course, which is this year and in the next couple of weeks. So it's very exciting. And here I am mapping out the perfect launch. And then I come across Caitlin and she's like, don't launch. And you're like, <laughs> and now you're like, okay, do I just ignore this message out there? And I learned from great people that you've been on podcasts with Amy Porterfield, yeah, you know, Pat her. Flynn. Yeah, all these Jenna Kutcher, they're, they're delivering. But something that's unique, because I was like, okay, Caitlin's different because she is just saying autopilot, you're launching. Well, that feels weird, right? Mm -hmm. Because all we know is the hustle culture is like, you can't be successful unless you're hustling and grinding. And it's funny, I went to bed last night listening to Marie Folio's productivity masterclass. So can you tell the audience how you're saying don't launch or you're saying always be launching. Can you go a little more into yeah. what that looks like, how you've managed to bring in $10 million of sales of courses? <laughs> yeah. So, and I want to say firstly to your listeners, like there is no one right way to do something. Okay. Some people love launching and they're great at it and it works for them. The people that I'm trying to reach are those that don't like it for whatever reason. It's just yeah. not for them. Maybe they're generating money from it, but it's just really depleting their energy. Maybe they are not generating money from it. And so I'm there to just give people a different option. And I want to go back just a little bit where yeah. into that first year where I made my first million dollars from selling the Facebook group course. And I was in a mastermind and everyone in the mastermind was launching except for this one guy. And I talk about him inside of my free masterclass. This guy had an online course about decluttering your home, keeping things organized. He was generating over $300,000 per month from that decluttering course. And I use that example because so many people think that the only courses that are profitable are those that teach others how to make money. And it's not true. The reason why it feels that way is because the only people that are talking about how much money they make are people who are teaching others how to make money. So of yeah. course you have to talk about it. Like if my course was about gardening, yeah. I'd be talking all day long about what an awesome gardener I was. And the reality yeah. is there are so many courses on like Pilates, guitar playing, art. And I've met these people, they're making millions of dollars. And so yeah. it wasn't until I met that guy in that mastermind. And when I figured out what he was doing without launching, I was like, what in the world? Like, I <laughs> it didn't even occur to me. Like, I didn't even know that. Here I am right now. I'm I sharing this know. journey because you like, just made me. You know what? And it's funny because he had a really big family. And so he was like, yeah, I just can't do the launches. And I was like, well, I hate doing them. Like, what are you doing? I was like, show me your numbers, sir. <laughs> See <laughs> the spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he walked me through the data and everything. <laughs> and I was finally able to see like, oh, okay, so this, that, whatever. I want to try selling my own course on autopilot. And there was a lot of trial and error because I was figuring things out. But once I finally was able to get it, it was just like this big weight had been left off. And it's not to say that it's super easy to do. Like anything, it's hard work. It's like, pick your heart. Do you want it to be hard to launch or do you want it to be hard to get? this thing going on autopilot. For me personally, I just want to be with my family. I don't want the big getting all the affiliates and I just don't like any of that. 
But that's not to say it doesn't work. And it's not to say that other people don't find it valuable. And for some people, they've never launched anything. They've never put something out there. So they actually don't know until they do it. And that's where it's interesting because that's where you've been able to do this. Now, this is a this is gonna this is interesting because I want to know and I'm yeah. curious. The listeners might be thinking, okay, did Caitlin make her first million selling that course by the autopilot not launching? Which I want to, if you can give a teaser, because I know you offer a big extensive course that people can go through and walk through the frameworks with you. But also something that more and more people are talking about with the rise of AI and everything is going to look standardized. What is differentiating everything today is the community and the trust you've built with the community. Was it one or the other or was it a combination of your course was successful because of the trust you had built in your community, your Facebook um, community? And were they the only ones buying or were they sharing it with friends? Was it the one or, you know, one or the other, or was it a combination? So I think that when people talk about building a community, building trust with your, com uh, with your community and all of that, one, the first thing that comes to mind for me is feeling comfortable showing up as my true authentic self online. And for some people that takes time to do. Right. It takes literally just putting in the reps, like posting, yeah. posting, yeah. posting yeah. until you finally get into the groove. Because when we first start putting content out there is how we build community online. It's yeah. all based on content is the tool that gets you from stranger to knowing, liking, trusting, and then buying from them. content is that vehicle. The more you can put of yourself into that content, the more it's going to resonate. Yeah. A lot of times what happens, this happens with ChatGPT and we use ChatGPT in our business too for various things. So like- Who doesn't? I do it to make yeah. my meals for tonight. But, <laughs> yeah, but you've got to, you have to insert your own personality into yeah. it. In my program, we give you templates, we give you frameworks. Some of the stuff has swipe copy, but I always tell people the more you can- because like sometimes the first version, people are literally just like popping the thing, which like I understand because they're they're learning. Yeah. But the more you can not do that and put your personality into those words, it's going to resonate with your audience so much more. And you're going to you're going to stand out. And people are spend so much time online. They can tell if someone's being authentic or not. Like you can For just. Sure have that gut feeling whether yeah. it's in person or online for sure it's it's yeah people are are we're smarter than ever with content yeah yeah and so for like your launch did you leverage the community and yeah. how long did you know that that was the right time because we're mm. we're you're launching but you're not launching so the listeners are like what are you talking about what's a non-launch what's an autopilot launch yeah. what is an autopilot launch so the way that we teach people how to do with our accelerator program is how to build a profitable sales engine in 30 days and when i say that i don't mean that because it's so fancy i mean that it's so simple and effective and so what people are doing is they're building out their profitable sales engine. They're putting their offer out there. And when they do, they're able to collect data along the way and see, you know, okay, like I'm not meeting this benchmark. And so then I look at the decision tree over here and it says, if this is high, do this. If this is low, do that. And so it's very kind of like, once you have all that data, it's very paint by the numbers. And right. the thing right. about automating and having that run on autopilot is that number one, you're going to see much higher engagement rates because people can choose whatever time that they want in order to sign up for the webinar right. or watch it on demand. So the attendance, they're con you're increasing the chance that people will actually consume that content. Whereas right. a live webinar, you're going to see like 10%, 15% attendance rate. Whereas if you're doing an automated webinar, it's like 50%, 60% even higher because people can choose. So are you saying that you offer the live webinar, which <laughs> I was one of the people on and I was like, 
Are you there? Yeah. So one of the things that's really hard for people to understand is that what I'm doing in my business now would break a business that's making less than a million. Right. So automated right. webinars were the tool for me to get my first million. And it's yes. the tool that my clients use to get their first million. After you have that money coming in and after you can yeah. afford a big team like I have and you can afford to spend loads of money on ads and you can afford to do all the things, then you can start to layer other stuff on top if you want to. So like for me, I have a podcast. I do live webinars. I do, sometimes I do in-person events. Sometimes I, you know, like yes. it's kind of all the whole thing. But for people that are just getting started, if you're making less than a million dollars per year, the number one thing you need to focus on is how to generate consistent revenue. Right. Like if yeah. you really want to, just like a plant needs water to grow, a business need, needs money to thrive. And if you don't have revenue coming in, <laughs> you're going to run out. And I have been there. So have so, I. Yeah. And so sometimes it's like, I always talk about this with my students. I'm very open with them. And I explain it on the masterclass as well. You know, it can be very dangerous when, when you're looking at what other people are doing, because a lot of times you only see what's happening on the surface and you're not yeah. seeing the full thing happening underneath or having context for everything. So all of these customized various things that I have happening are not the things that someone needs in order to get to their first million. And it would break your business to attempt to attempt yes. otherwise. Yes. And I think it's really important that you make note of that because I think that's the thing and that's the problem is like you and I say you, one needs to recognize yeah. where am I on you know, the scale of my business and what is the highest priority? What should I be doing and what is not helpful? And I think I think it's so interesting because, yeah, that on demand, that's what a majority of people are wanting. They want that information right away. And then there's a whole other audience that wants Caitlin to say, hi, Claire. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and I think it's interesting because that's what makes you really unique, Caitlin. And I love it because a lot of people aren't talking about that. The hustle culture sometimes is too loud. Mm -hmm. And we know it's just like grind it out, work harder. But I like your approach is that I'm catching people at the right time. A lot of times and I was listening to a podcast and you were saying, you know, getting people into the funnel when it works for them, because a lot of people I know for when I run my business and when I work with people, I'm like, hey, I ask them, I'm big on asking questions. And they're like, oh, I'm just not ready yet. Or, yeah. you know, if you hit me up like in a month or so, I'll totally be ready. A lot of the things are timing. Would you say that's the approach that you're connecting with people staying in their, so to speak, their, you know, their online space, their community. So when they are ready, they can pull the trigger and yeah. buy in. I think the other thing is giving people a sense of control. Yeah. The name of yeah. the game for funnels in 2024 is consent and permission. You are in charge of your own journey. You get to decide when to buy. You get to decide when you want to think about buying. Yeah. By creating content, every level of the funnel, whether it's social media, like that top level or the webinar or the follow-up emails or whatever it is, Creating that content and having a journey for someone to follow so that they can choose to move forward when they're ready. And if they right. want to stay in that level for a while, yeah. that's totally fine. They can do that. You said that to me and I'm getting more and more excited. I'm like, I am signing up for the masterclass, the full gambit after this conversation, because it's really interesting when we talk about it and we go through it and we hear from you. And I know a lot of listeners are maybe trying to package their first course. Now, I work so much with brick and mortar businesses mm -hmm. and trying to getting my passion is really trying to package what they have, share their education and sell that, whether it's a course, whether it's a workshop, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, for a listener, let's say they've never built a course, they've never packaged something. Mm -hmm. The imposter syndrome is real. I have a confidence of teaching for 10 plus years in the classroom. I can get in front of a million people. And that's just what I have built that strength. A lot of people I work with are just absolutely terrified being like, what if my course isn't good enough? Like, will I help someone? Is my speaking voice okay? But what do you usually teach people in your course about 
the actual product itself. Elizabeth Gilbert said, done is better than perfect. I try and tell myself all that as a perfectionist. Done is better than perfect sometimes. And obviously that doesn't work for everyone, but for someone like me, it does. Could you speak to the product itself? Where does it need to be? How do we know that it's good enough to want or to (laughs) auto-launch? Yeah. So the thing that people need to understand is that even, even people who are like, my course is incredible. I am so excited to get this out. It is perfect. Da, 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 da. Once they put their course out there, I guarantee that within, you know, two or three months, they're going to have so many ideas for how they can make it even better. Some people 100%. have all those ideas before they open it up for enrollment, but then quickly realize all the other things. And so what I always tell people is like, You know, we grew up in a culture where a lot of us are taught from a very young age that making that the number one thing you need to do is like is be perfect, right? Like we have to be perfect at all times. And I think that what we need to realize is shift our thinking from getting everything ready to then present to the world to making things to being a work in progress and making things better over time. Yes. And so when you're selling it in an automated way, getting new students every day, you're constantly learning. You're mm-hmm. thinking, you're learning like, hey, everyone seems to have a question at the same question about lesson two. So I'm going to go add a frequently asked question. Am I going to go record lesson two altogether? No. Yeah. But I will. That's how I feel. I love that you said. I'm like, that's I don't sleep at night because yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't add this part. And it's like, totally. oh, my gosh. And okay. I get and so figuring out what's the stop. Oh, I can ask yes. like a ask question. And then like I can put in my yearly calendar, maybe you want to make an update twice per year. And that's when you would make little edits to a PDF or a, you know, yeah. a video or whatever. But because there's there's always a way to make it better. And that's what's so exciting. And that's yeah, you're what right. deepens the connection is like putting it out there and then figuring out, oh, and then there's this and there's that. I like the stop gap that you said, because I think everybody has their own stop gap, you know, where it, and someone that takes pride as a photographer and a content creator, you're like, yeah. oh, my goodness. Like, and then you start tweaking and then you have to ask yourself, is that important? Can I stop here and move on? Like, is is the gap? No, I think it's it's really interesting because really we're speaking to we're speaking to people like, you know, that are just starting out. So when you're starting, oh. and I love that you talk about there's different levels of resources that you tap into. What if you're yeah. just one? Mm-hmm. When you were starting out, what were the key, the solo, like what are the important resources that you are you have a limited resources? What are those resources yeah. that are really important? Okay, so I am super scrappy. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I need to stop being so scrappy, but When I first started selling my course, I didn't know how to, like, now there's so many course platforms. There's like Teachable, Thinkific, da-da-da-da, Kajabi, whatever, all these different things. And they're all good. And they all kind of do the same thing. Like, yeah, they have like different bells and whistles, but it's like a place to put your course. I didn't know about any of that. And I didn't want to wait to figure it out. So, but I did have a Squarespace website. And so I figured out how to do like a password. (laughs) You know how you can put like a password? password page yes so my my first course was it was essentially like a long blog and like each post was send me cash in the mail and i'll give you a password (laughs) yeah and and so every so it was like i would type out the instructions i would put in um i like embedded the video that i used screencast to to record yeah the free version and there was a big screencast watermark on my video (laughs) Oh, but that's that. amazing. Right? I put that on there. But people didn't care because the information that I was sharing yeah. worked. People yeah. were applying what they learned and they were getting results. I yeah. made a worksheet from Google Doc, which was basically yeah. just, you know, creating the text box, including the directions, downloading it as a PDF and uploading it to the Squarespace. So, I mean, the downside is, does that scale over time? Not really, because everyone has the yeah. same password. <laughs> so that's like, so that's, that's cool. actually... 
That's, I was going to yeah. ask you that. How were you password? having all these multiple logins? Okay. Yeah, the password was bossy because it was bossy biz ladies. I mean, this is like, this, but you know what? I put it out I there. I love but, it. But people liked it. And I didn't even know, like I had, my sales page was also a blog post and I had it, I embedded the PayPal button so yeah. people could like purchase. Now the problem was once they made the purchase, I would get a PayPal notification, but I didn't have anything automated set up. So then I would email them. I'm like, hey, you, hey, pop lady, like, here's your password. And then I would have, and then I had the, like a student Facebook group. Yeah. And so that's where then they would ask questions and all that, but everyone was happy and they were getting great results. Like, yeah. it's, and I think that uh, for some people, they, they put so much pressure on themselves for it to be a certain way. And then over time. I hired a web developer that like built out a site, made it really nice, hired someone to make the work. Like they can make it pretty later, but people yeah. just need help. They just want results. Did that affect the pricing model when you went in? Would you like, what? if you don't mind, what was the yeah. first price stamp that you put on a course? Okay, so when I first started selling my course, again, no idea what I was doing. I actually charged my course no, my one-on-ones were less expensive than my course. So my one-on-ones, I was like, I charged like $67 for like a 40-minute one-on-one. It was $67, which my mom, by the way, was like, Caitlin, I just think that is too high. I think $20 is a good that like oh, I really think. And I was like, I don't know, mom, I see other people do it late. And she's like, I just think. And I was like, okay, well, we're just going to try this. So I said, so I said, and then my course was 97 and, but oh then, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. But then after a while, I was like, okay, wait a minute. We need to reverse this. And then I eventually raised the, eventually, I, you know, stopped doing the one on ones because I didn't have time. And then I was just selling that course for $197. Then when I went to Wham Bam Instagram, I think I sold that <laughs> one for $497. I'm not sure. It might be yeah, yeah. $97. It was basically just based on my own limiting beliefs. But <laughs> she's the front. But and no, so, no, I mean, it. you had the audience, they were buying. No, it's just, it's interesting because that's something you can go down a rabbit hole, which I do in many capacities. And it's funny because you have hit it. There is that secret number. In the oh, seven. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm not, I, I was like, okay, I absolutely love it. Now, speaking about online courses, the launch, I really wanted to, before we wrap today, talking about the importance of like, evergreen content mm. can you speak to we hear the word evergreen and we wonder how do we know something's evergreen what if the topic of our course is let's say ai for small businesses which is something i actually work in or let's say it's you know social media and a lot of people that i talk to when they do courses they're like i don't put out social media courses because of that reason i have to change it every two weeks yeah. so could you before, you know, could you talk to us about, you know, what does that mean to create evergreen content? And you mean like for social media specifically like that? Kind yes. Of or like part of like content. you want to put out your content and you want to share what you're doing, but you want to be able to keep yeah. it, you know, timeless in a certain yeah. way. How do you do that if you're in a space? Let's say I know a lot of my clients I work with. It is very focused on the changing trends and the movements in technology, for example. Yeah. So I think what you need to become aware of is what are the problems that I'm actually solving for people here? Yeah. And then they can learn more about your method inside the masterclass and they can learn how to implement the method once they yeah. buy your course. But the other thing that I will say, though, that a lot of people don't think about because sometimes I get emails from people that are like, hey, Caitlin, I'm thinking of buying your course because I've been running, you know, an evergreen webinar for the last year and it started out really great. But now, like, it's just not performing as well. Like, is are people just not watching evergreen webinars anymore? Like, what's it, you know, what's happening? And I always say that everything works. Launching works. Evergreen webinars work. Like, whatever. Right. It all works. But the market is always shifting. And so you do need to keep your ear to the ground in terms of what problems are they now aware of? The more products that enter the marketplace, the higher level of sophistication your buyer has. Your buyer becomes aware 
of a different kind of problem than perhaps they were aware that they were having a year ago, right? Right. Whereas like when they first, like when, you know, the first AI courses or whatever that are coming out, it could be all about like saving time, right? Like yeah. Oh, yeah, productivity, yeah. Yeah. But then over time, and that may work for a year, it might be work for, right. you know, but then over, but then over time, it's like, people are going to be, have that so integrated in their lives. It's like, well, that's not the problem. Now the problem is da, 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 da. And the issue is that your, your course probably solves both problems. So it's not about changing the course. It's about shifting the messaging around. Right. Your and right. You that's what you initially be, had talked about. That's and you what the, have to be connected with your market to understand that. And so what happens is people kind of like, they think, uh, you know, oh, Evergreen doesn't work for me. Or I guess people, even if they're launching, they're like, well, I guess nobody wants this course anymore. And it's like, well, maybe you just need to adjust your messaging. Maybe that course yeah. that you've been selling for three years, it's still a great course, but your market has changed. That And the buying behaviors have changed and yeah. how people know. And I think that, and oh, Kaylin, I could go so much <laughs> deeper, but I think we need to wrap in the next few minutes here. The biggest thing though I do want our listeners what after they listen they're going to be super amped like I am and excited where can we take the listener where's the next step into Caitlin's world that they can be a part of and learn from you and maybe you know in the next year they're going to put out a piece of content uh, and I say content a course Mm -hmm. Where can they start getting some information? And, you know, I know the masterclass is maybe where you're directing them, but could you share where they can continue to learn from you after this episode? Yeah. So the best place to go is just my website. It's caitlinbatcher.com. There's a link to sign up for my free masterclass where you can learn more about our method. Um, but I also have a podcast, Skill with Success, the podcast, and that's available on my website as well. So for those of you that are like, oh, I don't really want to sign up for the free master class. I just want to tinker around in here. Then you can definitely uh, listen to the podcast there. And I love it. And then who knows? They might be part of the sharing of Caitlin. And it's interesting because she is live. <laughs> <laughs> that is exciting. And it was cool to be part of Caitlin. I think this is so cool that we've been able to connect. I have obviously been a fan since 2016 and here we are how many years later and it's really cool to see your success and how you're helping thousands and millions of people on this planet to, you know, I always say to spread their awesome to get their message out there and not to have to say it every day over and over and create this beautiful work-life balance that you've built for yourself. So Thank you uh, for inspiring so many people and being part of the Small Entrepreneur Podcast for solopreneurs to go out there and do what they love and make money doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. 